from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Virginia Mayo and Dennis Morgan in This Woman is Dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. So often when the guilty try to reform from a life of crime, they find themselves tied inexorably to the past. Such is the predicament in tonight's play, This Woman is Dangerous. When a beautiful woman in love with a famous doctor is unable to sever her tie with a vicious member of her gang. And as our stars of this suspenseful screen hit from the Warner Brothers Studios, we have Dennis Morgan in his original role, co-starring with lovely Virginia Mayo. Now, This Woman is Dangerous, starring Virginia Mayo as Beth Austin and Dennis Morgan as Dr. Ben Halleck. <laughs> A few hours ago in New Orleans, a nightclub and gambling casino was held up and robbed. The crime was exceedingly well planned. The police had very little to work on. Come on in, McGill. Well, what'd you find out? Nothing. Not even a fingerprint. Lindsay's got the owner downstairs. He's booking him for running a gambling house. Well, he must suspect somebody. Get to him. The only one he can think of is a girl, somebody named Austin, Beth Austin. Seems that just before the robbery, she wanted some big bills changed. Well, they'd no more than opened up the safe for when the holdup took place. What do you think that proves? Well, not very much, Captain. Anyway, the dame's been a good customer. Been in there almost every night for over a month. You may be right, Captain. She may have been setting it up for them. Well, get hold of her. See what she's got to say. Uh, I was just about to tell you. She's been living at the Hotel Picone, only she's checked out suddenly. No forwarding address. Beth Austin, huh? Can he wreck it on it? No, sir. Not here. But uh, we can pick her up at noon. Like I said, they don't know where she went. But they do know that she made reservations for Indianapolis on the 12 o'clock plane. Okay, get down there. No. No, let her alone. Let her take the plane. She's uh, high class, huh? Hotel Pecone. Plenty of looks and swell clothes. I got a pretty good friend in Indianapolis. FBI. A fellow by the name of Harry Franklin. Put a call through, will you, McGill? There's just a chance that Franklin might be interested. Where have you been, Beth? I said you'd be here an hour ago. There were some things I had to attend to at the hotel. Matt, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Things to attend to, huh? What happened, Beth? The maid who brought you breakfast in bed, forget the doily? You let her alone, Will. She doesn't feel well. After last night, I feel fine. We should all feel fine. Shut up. Beth, we've got another job lined up. Baton Rouge, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Are you crazy? What's so wrong with it? Look, how long did it take us to work out the details at that gambling club? About two months. Why? Because by now you should understand that this sort of thing needs to be planned. When are you going to stop listening to her? We did all right before she ever came in. Matt, how much did we make last night? Close to 90,000 bucks. This Baton Rouge deal is good for another 20, and it's wide open. I don't care if it's a million. We're not going to touch it. What do you think the police are doing? We're red hot. Yeah, you're right, Will. Tell the boys it's off. Well, go on, get out of here. Making a mistake. So I'm making a mistake. Tell them. You had breakfast, Beth? You want coffee? Nothing, thanks. And let us alone for a minute, will you? Sure. Go with Will. Ann said you didn't feel well. Another uh, headache? Same one. Matt, you made me a promise. No risky job. Don't break that promise while I'm gone. While well, you're gone? Where? Indiana. That private hospital I told you about. It's my eyes, Matt. I have to have an operation. Who said so? The doctor I saw yesterday. Why didn't you tell me you, you saw a doctor? Oh, because of last night. I didn't want to upset you. Last night? That's why you moved it up to last night, huh? So you could get away sooner. Not with me, but from me. So you could get your cut and beat it. 
so I could help you before I had to go away. I'll come, Indiana. Why not here? Because the best doctor is there. He knows you're coming? He's waiting for you? Yes. I sent him a telegram. I can't stand it much longer, Matt. These headaches are driving me out of my mind. But you don't even bother to tell me. What sort of a routine is this? Something I wouldn't lie that about. That guy in Miami was something you wouldn't lie about either, remember? That was your fault. You stopped listening to me and listened to your cute little brother. Will had nothing to do with that guy in Frisco. Remember that? A lot of men have looked at me. But what you don't remember is that I don't look back. Unless you start making sense... Don't do it, Beth. Don't even try it. Then don't drive me away from you. Every time you're broke, you say, I'm going to look for someone better. Every time you're in the money, you say, I'm going to take my cut and get out. I'm sick of hearing it, Matt. I'm sorry. Oh, you say that it's gratitude. But the only reason I'm sticking with you is because you gave me a helping hand when I... Forget it, will you? I said I was sorry. How long will you be gone? I don't know. Okay. We'll stay undercover for a couple of days and then take the trailer and head for Nashville. Keep away from the city, Matt. So we'll hole up in the cottage, then. That make you happy? And stay at the cottage. When will I hear from you, Beth? It depends on the operation. Here. Here's the address. It's about ten miles from Indianapolis. But don't phone and don't write. There's no sense taking any chance. Well, who'd be taking the chance, honey? Me or you? Say goodbye to Ann for me. Try to keep that brother of yours in line. Oh, Will's okay. I can handle Just Will. Just keep your promise, Matt, and stay away from trouble. We've got one chance to be smart, to quit while we're ahead. Yeah, we'll talk about it sometime. Now, this operation is nothing serious. I told you. No, it's not very serious. All right, take it easy, Beth. Only, only don't forget I'll be waiting for you. And just don't get any ideas. <laughs> Well, Dr. Halleck, what's the verdict? We can talk about that later. I want you to sit down again. Now look straight ahead, please. There's two white dots on the wall. That's right. Just as you did before. Now fix your attention on that small dot and tell me if the large one disappears. Can you see it? Yes. Can you still see it? It's moving now. Out of your vision? I'm not sure. It's, it's so hazy. Let's try it again. I just can't concentrate, Dr. Halleck. My head, it, it's aching so everything's blurred. How long have you been having these attacks? For almost a year. But they weren't really severe until a few weeks ago. If you look just straight ahead, Miss Austin, just forget about the dots. Keep your eyes open. Both eyes, please. You're sensitive to any strong light, aren't you? I just can't look at a bright light. My head starts to whirl. And you've seen several doctors, you said? Yes. Some of them mentioned an operation, but I just didn't have the time. Well, you should have made time. I wasn't really frightened until the doctor in New Orleans told me... Told you what, Miss Austin? He said that without an operation, I'd, I'd probably go completely blind. He didn't pull any punches, did he? I insisted that he tell me the truth. I had to know. Well, I'm afraid his diagnosis was correct. He told me to come to you, Dr. Halleck, that if anyone could help me... I'd rather not try, Miss Austin. The operation is exceedingly delicate. The odds are all against it. But you have performed it. Yes. Successfully. On rare occasions. Then why not operate on me? Because if I fail, you'll be permanently blind. I'm not afraid to take the risk. What about your family? Friends? I... I have no one. You've thought this over carefully? I'm going blind, Dr. Halleck. More than that, I get these unbearable headaches. Sometimes they're so bad that... Yes. I've thought it over very carefully. Do you have any phone calls you'd like to make? Any letters you want to write? The nurse will help you. What does that mean? If we're going to operate, the sooner the better. Tomorrow morning, Miss Austin. Oh, thank you. Hello. Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mason, this is Franklin. You looking for me? Better get back to the office, Harry. There's a teletype coming through. Something to do with that Austin woman. I'll make sure she's still in the hospital first. I checked this morning. She's still there. Then make it fast. This looks like something hot. Well, what's it all about?
out, Doug. Where's the teletype? In a minute. Now, what's the latest on Miss Austin? Well, operation on her eyes six days ago at Halleck's Hospital. Be a while yet before they can take off the bandages. Dr. Halleck know we're checking on her? Nobody knows except one of the orderlies and the switchboard operator. They tell me Halleck's very interested in her case. She's received no mail, no one sent flowers. What's the push? You get a break on that holdup in the one? It's a lot more than that. The state trooper's been killed in Arkansas. They didn't find his body until this morning. Apparently, he'd stopped the car on the highway, a car and a trailer. The trailer was found some distance from the road with the trooper's body. They just identified it as belonging to Matt and Will Jackson. Jackson, buddy? They're believed to be heading into Tennessee. Oh. Now, uh, getting back to Beth Austin, you said she had a record. Yeah, five years ago in Chicago. Served six months of a one-year sentence for embezzlement. As far as we know, she's been a good girl ever since. Except she left her fingerprints in that trailer. Which means that sometime before she entered the hospital, she was with the Jackson brothers. So get back to the hospital and stay there. I'll put Taylor and Agent on it with you. Right. Beth Austin is now our best bet to lead us to the Jacksons. Don't tell me. It's Dr. Hallett. How did you know, Miss Austin? I'm beginning to recognize footsteps. It's so strange living in a dark world, having to see with your other senses. Well, how am I doing? You're coming along fine. I suppose it does have its advantages. Drifting in the dark, you don't have to face reality. I think you can always face reality. You have a great deal of courage. How much longer? Well, I think we can take the bandages off in another few days. Then we'll know. Oh, come in, Maggie. I'll uh, see you this afternoon, Miss Austin. Thank you. Good morning. Well, hello, Maggie. What kind of a day is it? No different than any other day, Miss Austin. From where I sit, it's different. Dr. Halleck, he seemed quite pleased with my condition. Why wouldn't he be? You're doing fine. Oh, pray for me, Maggie. You don't need any prayers, just vitamins. Here, swallow the stuff. Oh, I've got news for you. Starting today, you can take phone calls. Thanks, but nobody's going to call me. Not here. Oh, well, anything I can do for you? I don't think so. Oh, you can turn on the radio if you will. Ten o'clock news again, huh? Please. You and the news. You afraid you're going to miss out on something? I like to know what's going on in the world. One of these days you're going to read what's going on. I hope so, Maggie. Keep your fingers crossed. Matt, take it easy, will you? You'll hear from Beth as soon as she... I should have heard from her three or four times by now. If she can't talk on the phone, she can't write. Oh, I sure hope she's doing okay. You want my opinion? Nobody's asked for it, so keep quiet. If she wanted, she could get a letter out some way. Sure, if she wanted to. She's no good for you, Matt. Take a look at yourself. Can't even think in a straight line anymore. She knows where we are. She knows we'll be hiding out here at the cottage. Least she could do is keep giving me the needle, Will, in one of these days. I'm not talking just to hear myself talk. I don't like what she's doing to you. She's such a hot rock, why don't she marry you like Ann married me? I never asked her to. Why not? Scared she'd say no? I'm getting out of here. Matt. No, I'll be back. I'm just going into town. What for? Got to make a phone call. If I don't get straightened out, I'll go nuts. Hello? Beth. Matt. Matt, where are you? I know where I am. What's gotten into you? Wait a minute. Is that Will listening in? No, I'm in a booth in town. Why? I thought I had a peculiar click. Yeah, I did too. I've been listening to the radio, the news broadcast. I heard what happened. It's bad enough breaking your promise, but if you run crazy... Skip it. All I want to know is what you're doing. I won't skip it. Now listen to me. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Austin. I didn't know you were on the phone. I can't talk anymore. Uh, yes, that'll be all, thank you. Come in, Doctor. It was nothing important. Well, I have something that is. It's what we've been waiting for. Dr. Halleck. I'm going to remove the bandages. But don't open your eyes until I tell you to. Hmm? Your pulse is rapid, Miss Austin. Well, it should be. You wouldn't be human if you weren't scared. Now, don't concern yourself about pain. There won't be any. Just tell me when you're ready. I'm ready, Miss Austin. The bandages are off. Now, open your eyes. Can you see anything? There's a light. They're on the floor. It's by the door, I think. Yes. The sunlight's coming in under the door. Now look up. Look away from it. Oh, it's so good to see it. Now what else can you see? 
It won't be easy. The room's darkened. A vase. A vase of flowers. A, a light fixture. A chest of drawers. A doorknob. How many fingers am I holding up? Five. How many now? Just one. Completely in focus? Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Dr. Halleck, I'm so grateful to you. You had as much to do with it as I did. Now I've got a present for you. Pinpoint goggles. They'll protect your eyes until they're readjusted again to the light. Thank you. You're a remarkable woman. No tears. I want to cry, but I never can when anyone else is around. Doctor, how soon can I leave here? Well, there's still a lot of tests to be made. How long will they take? Slow down, Miss Orson. You've been a model patient up to now. You're going to have to face the fact that the danger is far from past. I'm sure you wanted permanent results, otherwise you wouldn't have undergone this ordeal. Oh, yes, of course. So let's forget about time. You just wear these goggles until I tell you to take them off. We'll start the test in the morning. Now, any other questions? No. No other questions, Dr. Allen. What is it, Matt? What's wrong? Couldn't you get her on the telephone? I got her, Ann. I got her. We're staying here, aren't we? We haven't got any any crazy ideas about going after her. We're staying for a while, anyway. Where's Will? Inside, sleeping. Oh. I called the hospital and she answered, see? Only somebody else was listening. How can you be sure? It was long distance. Well, you know how sometimes... I said it... somebody else was listening. I got to know who and I got to know why. She's okay, Matt. That's going to be okay. They, they fixed her eyes. She's okay or they wouldn't let her talk. I made another phone call, Ann, to Chicago. Chicago? That's right, the flower shop, Merrill's flower shop. He's going to send somebody over to the hospital, somebody who can find out what I got to know. I just hope you know what you're doing. I got to know if there's another guy. Oh, just one more thing, Ann. Well? This is between you and me, you understand? If Will finds out, he'll blow his top. Just you and me. Okay, Matt. Sure. It's been over a week now, Dr. Halleck. Isn't there anything you can tell me? I can tell you this much, Miss Austin. So far, all the tests have been successful. You can leave the hospital now, if you like. Now? Well, there's a catch to it. You'll have to stay close by. Might be a couple of weeks before you can really get away. Now, there's a nice resort hotel on the outskirts of town that ought to suit you perfectly. Be a pleasant change for you, and time will pass a lot more quickly. It sounds wonderful. If you want to leave today, I'll drive you over there myself. Thank you. It's a good excuse for me to take some time off. You think you should? You were gone all day yesterday. Did you have any fun in Indianapolis? Fun? I was there on a case. Do you ever think of anything but medicine? Occasionally. My girlfriend made the trip with me yesterday. Oh? An old romance? It's been going on nine years. Steadfast, aren't you? Not really. She's very young. My daughter. Oh. Somehow I never thought of you as having a family. I guess you'd say that two is a family. Even one when you've lived that learned to live alone. Well, what are you looking at? You. Your eyes. You've opened them for me again. In many ways, you've opened mine. Oh, uh, you won't have to wear those glasses anymore. How wonderful. That is, after dark. In that case, I'll take a fresh new look at the moon tonight. <laughs> I haven't taken a good look at the moon in years. Oh, you don't seem to be quite that old, Dr. Halleck. Now that you remind me, I'm not. Look, I've got a wonderful idea. I'll, I'll take you over to the hotel and then... Uh, well, by way of celebrating your recovery, I could come back later on and have dinner with you. No? I'd love to. Well, uh, how's 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock sounds fine, Dr. Howard. Thank you. Come in. Miss Austin? Yes? Excuse me for coming up on the night. Are you with the hotel? Oh, if it's about these rooms, I'm very... Oh, you curious. like the suite, huh? Yeah, it looks real nice to me, too. Only I'm not from the hotel. 
Here, this card will tell you who I am. Benton Detective Agency, Chicago. Joe Crosland, private investigator. Very private, Miss Austin. You're investigating me? <laughs> you wouldn't expect me to answer that question, would you? Chicago, hmm? You know anybody there? Yes. I have a very old friend there. He raises flowers. Dearborn Street? Halstead Street. Pleased to meet you, Miss Austin. Well? I got a client who thinks you might want to send him a message. And if I did, why should I need you? Well, he thinks somebody else is listening when you use the telephone. He also thinks you got company wherever you go. Any idea who the company might be? I didn't get the name, Miss Austin. But the initials are FBI. If what you say is true, tell your client that someone may be trying to locate him through me. Tell him to be very careful. And tell him I think I have a way to avoid all trouble. Dr. Halleck, huh? He kind of goes for you, huh? You're very sharp, aren't you? Now, if what you say is true, you'll be careful. I never met my client, but I gather he's the jealous type. Can't say that I blame him. Good night, Mr. Croslin. I'll deliver your message. Be seeing you, Miss Austin. In just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. There are people all over the world who still remember the kindness and consideration shown them by well-thinking Americans. You take the little German town of Waldorf. It has a population of only slightly over 6,000 people, but none of them has ever forgotten the memory of a great American philanthropist who was born in their town, a man named John Jacob Astor, just as he never forgot his birthplace. It was Mr. Astor who combined his own name with that of his birthplace when the famous Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York was christened. Mr. Astor did much for the little German town during his lifetime. And when he died, he bequeathed it a considerable amount of money to build the Astor House to care for the old, the feeble, and the helpless of Waldorf. In 1948, on the 100th anniversary of his death, the grateful town erected the 12-foot monument in the town square to honor his memory. And one of the speakers at the ceremony said, Mr. Astor has done more for Germany than any hundred of its inhabitants. By remembering the little German town where he was born, John Jacob Astor, American philanthropist, had made a few more friends for America. He'd shown his fellow Americans that by helping others, you help your country. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of This Woman is Dangerous, starring Dennis Morgan as Ben Halleck and Virginia Mayo as Beth Austin, with Leif Erickson as Matt. <laughs> It's a couple of days later, from a drugstore near the hospital, Franklin, the FBI agent, is talking to his office. Yeah, she just left the hospital. She's driving to Indianapolis with Dr. Halleck. They do back tonight. Taylor and Nugent are following them. Right. I'll check you later. So you see, I do take an afternoon off once in a while. Anyway, this is by way of trying to make up for that lunch we missed. Oh, um, I hope you won't mind just one stop on the way. And you just said you had the afternoon off. Well, practically. The call came in just as we left. Well, as long as I'll have time to do my shopping. That's a promise. Just remember to take it easy when we get into town. My first big day out, huh? Meanwhile, you see those buildings over there? Buildings? Over there, off the road, the foot of the hill. Well, that's the stop I've got to make. But, but it looks like a prison. That's what it is. Women's Division, state prison. But Why? Why are we going there? Well, because there's someone in the hospital I have to see. I hate prison. I hate the sight of it. Oh, this one isn't so bad. The rooms are clean. Food's good. You can learn an honest trade. Secretary, practical nurse, duty operator. Anything that suits you. Yes, just name it. And they put you in the laundry and steam you out. How do you know? Well, I... I don't. Not, not really. I, I must have read it somewhere. You won't be long, will you? No, I don't imagine so. You can wait in the car inside the gate. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd 
be. Sorry. Say anything interesting while I was gone? There were some women behind the wall. I, I could hear them. Couldn't hear them answer. One of them had been smoking a cigarette. You'd think the poor girl had done something horrible. Well, Ben, what about your patient? How long did you save her for? Five years? Ten? And for what? She died just as I got there. She's free now. And you, her doctor, you're glad? For her sake, yes. There was nothing they could have done for her. Beth, I, I didn't mean to put you through such a depressing experience. I guess this detour sort of taking the edge off your shopping. It doesn't seem to matter anymore. I wish I were back at the hospital. Why? I think I was happier there, not facing reality for that. You'll feel better when we get home. Home? My house in town. I want you to meet Susan, my little daughter. Uh, we can have dinner there, okay? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Ben, it's getting late. Hadn't we better start driving back to the hospital? In a little while. You see, I always promise Susan never to leave until I know she's fast asleep. It won't take her long. But first, she has to tell the housekeeper all about you. I wonder what she's saying. Kids are very honest, you know. She's telling her you're beautiful. And wonderful. And, and not like anyone else she's ever met before. What are you thinking of? Of Susan. And you. And this room. You all go together. I used to think you lived in a sterile cabinet somewhere. Everyone leaving a prison should first walk through a room like this. Comfortable, secure, and good. You belong here, Beth. You belong in this room, too. Do I? Or do I just remind you of someone else who once lived here? Susan's mother? If she had really belonged, she would have stayed. But a child can be very demanding, and a doctor doesn't have much time to spend at home. She gave up all this. It's not easy to understand. Beth, tell me about yourself. Can't you figure me out? I'd rather you tell me. That's a long, dull story. Let's not spoil a nice evening. What is it you don't want to tell me? Is it about Matt? What about Matt? You mentioned his name several times coming out of the anesthetic. What else did I say? Nothing, really. Just a jumble. Ben, please, what else did I say? I told you. Nothing. I... I want to leave town, Ben. When may I? Tomorrow? The next day? As a patient, you could have left a few days ago. Why didn't you tell me? I couldn't let you go until I was sure. Sure about what? I want you to stay here always. But you're so wrong about me. I don't belong here. I never will. But why? Why won't you tell me? Please don't ask me anything more. I'm going out to the car, Ben. I'll wait there. When you're ready, just take me back to the hotel. Come in. The bags are all in the... Beth. Oh, Ben, please. Please go away. There's nothing more to be said. I said it all last night. But I have a lot more to say. Then it's no use. You've got to believe me. What are you so afraid of? Nothing. Will you please go? Not until you make sense. Why are you so unreasonable? What am I up against? Questions. Questions you have every right to ask, but I can't answer them. Then there'll never be any questions. Susan didn't ask any. She liked you for what you are. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Beth, look. I have an emergency call out in the country. A farmer's little boy. I want you to come with me. It's a long ride. We'll settle this one way or another. No, no, it's no use, Ben. You don't mean that. I have a kit to pack at the hospital. Meet me there in half an hour. The basement garage. Half an hour, Beth. Can I come in? It's me again. What do you want, Mr. Crosman? Back with you, huh? So early in the morning. And so late last night. You should know that avoiding trouble is a 24-hour job. You're telling me. All right, you're a fine detective. I'll see that you get a bonus. Now will you get out of here? Bonus? Who from, honey? Dr. Halleck? Don't be ridiculous. He was my only way of getting out of town. Was? What made you change your mind about using him? Not that it's any of your business, but Dr. Halleck and I have been seen together too much. And if I'm being watched... Well, you are, baby. You are. Well, let them follow me to a big city, then. Well, I'll have a better chance of losing him. You know, Miss Austin, sometimes I hate these jobs. Take this one, for instance. Eh, it's not the FBI. Me, I'm in the clear. I'm a licensed investigator doing my job. Well, then. 
Well, I'd give anything not to have to report to my clients about you and the doc. Never mind what you give. How much will you take? Well, I look at it this way. When a man feels as shaky about his girl as my client does about you, he must have a real good reason. And besides, my terms are a lot different for a good-looking girl than they are for a jealous man. Put that down as your first installment. That slap was a big mistake, honey. I don't take that from things like You'll you. You'll take whatever I give you. And your client will get a full report of your little shakedown try. And if you're stupid enough to go back to that florist in Chicago, be sure and order yourself a wreath. I got a different idea. Just as soon as I tell this little love story to our florist friend, and just as soon as he repeats it to my client, I'll order a couple of reeds. One for you and one for Dr. Halleck. So long, Miss Hook. The car's ready, Dr. Halleck. Oh, and the garage says that Miss Austin's waiting for you down there. Then she did come. I beg your pardon? Uh, nothing, Maggie. Well, I've got to hurry. I probably won't be back for hours. Oh, before you go, Doctor, there's a man waiting to see you, a Mr. Franklin. You know I can't see anyone now. He said he's from the FBI. He's waiting across the hall. FBI? Okay, I'll talk to him on the way out. I I know you're in a great hurry, Doctor, but this won't take long. What's it all about, Mr. Franklin? I'm sorry I had to bring you in on this. Have you ever heard of the Jackson brothers, Matt and Will Jackson? Yes. Who hasn't? Well, Matt's pretty high up on our list. He's wanted for murder, armed robbery, lots of counts in several states. What does that to do with me? Your patient, Beth Austin. She's been working with him. I suppose you know what you're talking about. She's been tied up with him ever since Matt Jackson helped her to get out of prison. They've been watching her now for weeks ever since he's been here, hoping she'd lead us to them. Only now we're afraid she's trying to use you to help her get away without our knowing her. That's why we're alerting you. All right. I'm alerted. Will you help us? I'll, uh, I'll do whatever I can. Thank you. Ben, what's wrong? You've hardly said a word. Those questions still on your mind? I told you there wouldn't be any more questions. Then why are you so quiet? Maybe I'm trying to figure out a solution. Tell me what it really is, please. Just preoccupied, I guess. I, I'm thinking about that kid at the farm. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I should have known. Take it easy. What's eating you, Matt? I just came from town. I spoke to Merrill in Chicago. That guy he hired to check up on Beth. What did you find out? Her eyes, Matt. Can she see again? Yeah. So can the FBI. They're watching her. Who says so? The tale says so. I'm leaving. I'm going there. I'm going to get her out of there. Sit down, will you? Cool off. How crazy can you get? We're so hot from that state trooper, we're smoking. You go after that dame, the FBI will blow your head off. Well, it's my head they'll blow off. Oh, wait a minute. There's another guy, isn't there? Shut up. <laughs> Will! Oh, it's okay, baby. That's okay. Maybe now you'll keep out of my business. Oh, sure, sure I will. Go on, Matt. Go look for Beth. Show them how tough you are before they scrape you off the street and drop you in a basket. Well, what are you waiting for? All right, all right, so I shouldn't have slugged you. But there is another guy. Now lay off and get out of my way. I'm sure glad you got here, Ben. I've got the boy in the kitchen table. Pretty bad, depressed, frontal fracture. Oh, uh, this is his father, Fred Shaw, Dr. Halleck. Thanks for coming, Doctor. Uh, this your nurse, Ben? Oh, I'm sorry, Beth. This is Dr. Ryan and Mr. Shaw. How do you do? How do you do? No, uh, she's not a nurse. You better stay out here, Beth. Can't I help at all? Wait till I see how things are. We don't have any choice, Ben. We've got to operate here. Uh, Dr. Ryan told me what the chances are. I I know you'll do whatever you can. Uh, where's the boy's mother? Uh, she's with him, Doc, inside. What about plasma, Bill? I found the drugstore. They got some. Take my car, Beth. Uh, where'll she find the drugstore? Uh, you pass it on the way here. It's about eight miles down the road to the village. You can't miss it. Drugstore is right across from the bus depot. Think you can find it, Beth? Oh, yes, of course. I'll go right away. Get two jars. And please hurry. We need that plasma as soon as possible. A smart idea, Ben. I saw right off he wasn't used to this. He must have known I'd have plasma, even if you didn't. Let's go in. <laughs>
Now you're sure you know where it is. The Shaw Farm. Don't worry, ma'am. I know the place. We'll get that plasma out there in no time. But how soon? It's an emergency. Delivery boy's just down the street. He'll be here in a minute. Thank you. Oh, could I uh, have some change, please? I want a telephone. Uh, nickels and dimes? Of course, it'd be better. I have to call the car. Hello? Merrill's Flower Shop. Merrill? Yeah. This is Beth Austin. Can you hear me? I hear you. Where are you phoning from? It doesn't matter. When did you last speak to Matt? Oh, about an hour ago. Oh? Did you give him all the information Croslin had to report? What information is that? Look, Merrill, don't what information means. Just tell me, yes or no. Matt knows everything except the guy's name. Then listen to me very carefully. If Matt calls back again, or if you can possibly get in touch with him, tell him I said to stay where he is. Tell him not to do anything crazy, but I'll be there in the morning. Did you hear that? You'll be there in the morning. Believe me, Merrill, it's terribly urgent. Okay. I'll try to reach him. Thank you. Get your call through okay, miss? Yes. Tell me, uh, that bus across the street, when does it leave? Uh, that's the Chicago bus, ma'am. It's due to leave in, uh, well, let's see now, in 12 minutes. Uh, about that plasma, you're sure it'll be delivered? I'll run it out there myself if I have to. Oh, and will you get word to Dr. Halleck, please, that I left his car parked just across the street? Okay, miss, I'll tell him. You see, I... Yes, ma'am? I've changed my mind. Just give me the plasma. I'll take it out myself. Mr. Shaw. Yes, Doc? You can go in now. Your wife and Dr. Ryan are inside with your boy. Doc. I know what you want to say, so consider it said. Your boy's going to be all right, Mr. Shaw. In the morning, Dr. Ryan will bring him into the hospital. He'll mend faster there. If I could only thank your proper... Miss Austin, where did she go? The lady, she... She said she'd wait in the car, Doc. Thanks. You're still worried, aren't you, Ben? But you said the boy'd be all right. You can never be sure. People look at you, trust in you, believe in you. And you let them believe. You're tired and it's dark. That makes everything look dark. Ben, we're reaching the village. I want you to let me out when we get there. Why? There's a bus station. I'm leaving. Just run out? Without saying anything? There's nothing to say. Not even when I tell you I know all about you? You knew when I came back with the plasma, didn't you? It doesn't make sense. I gave you a chance to get away and you came back. I should have gone then. I'm not going to let you go. I want to help you. Who's going to help Matt? He's too far gone for anyone else to help him. Let the law take care of him. You not only don't know all about me, you don't know anything about me. I'm going back to Matt. Just tell me that you love him. Answer me. Do you love him? Well, it was... Oh, it doesn't matter what it was. It was a long time ago. I was desperate and Matt helped me. I can't forget that. You still didn't answer me. Do you love him? Yes, yes, I love him. I don't believe that. You're lying. I don't care what you believe. I'm going back to Matt because that's what I want to do. And if I ever meant anything to you... Well? Don't try to find me again. Act three of This Woman is Dangerous will continue in a few moments. Make a friend, and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has, like Fiorello LaGuardia, the busy little mayor of New York who found time to get on the radio and read funnies to the kids. There was a man who loved children, and through his love saw the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund come into being. To start such a fund, LaGuardia went to Europe, not as a representative of the UN, but as an American citizen. He traveled from country to country, investigating conditions, speaking to the people, and making friends. In his native land, Italy, he helped hand out food to the needy and won their admiration. On his return to the United States, LaGuardia worked day and night to sell the need for a children's emergency fund. And finally, the General Assembly of the UN adopted his proposal unanimously. 
in a resolution which stated that as many children as possible to the age of 18 would receive help from the fund on the basis of need without discrimination because of race, creed, nationality, or political belief. Workers all over America donated a day's pay to the fund, as did children in all kinds of schools, organizations, and churches. But LaGuardia didn't live to see the full success of the great work he helped to start. His big heart stopped the night before the UN announced aid allocation to over 3,700,000 children and mothers in 12 European countries and China. But others picked up where Fiorello LaGuardia left off. People like him, who knew that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of This Woman is Dangerous, starring Virginia Mayo as Beth Austin and Dennis Morgan as Ben Halleck, with Leif Erickson as Matt. <laughs> Several hours have gone by, and Joe Crossland, private investigator, is a very uneasy guest in Indianapolis headquarters of the FBI. But I told you a dozen times, the only questions I ever asked Merle was how much and when do I get it? Not who and where to rent. Why don't you talk to him? Merle Flower Shop, Halsted Street. Maybe we tried and got nowhere. So why pick on me? I'm just trying to make a living. Here, keep this card. You may want to get in touch with us sometime. Just remember, Crossland, it doesn't take much for fellows like you to lose their licenses. I'll get out of here. Yes, sir. And if you have nothing else to do, you might like to think about how much the Jackson brothers are worth on the hoof. It's quite a reward. Got that teletype ready? Let me hear it. Yeah. To all points. Beth Austin left on St. Louisville bus last night. Purchased car in Centerwood. Taylor and Nugent following. We'll report progress. Okay. Send it out. But you just can't let her stand there. But Beth will. Now let her in. Can you keep your mouth shut? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Open the door. Hello, Anne. There. Not even glasses. Oh, you are right now. Perfectly all right. It's good to see you, Anne. Hello, Will. Yeah. I see you're in your usual good humor. Where's Matt? Out. When will he be back? Didn't say. We'll be leaving as soon as he does. We'll get out of the country. Mexico, maybe. Someplace far away. We'll want you to come with us, Anne. You and Will. No more hiding out, huh? Oh, Will, maybe we can make Why it. Why don't you stop kidding yourself? But you promised. You always said we'd quit this racket. Well, Beth wants to. She can handle Matt. She always has. Oh, Will, don't be like that. Tell her. You've got to tell her. Tell me what. Where is he? Where's Matt? He's burning up the road to Indianapolis to find you. They're up to something, huh, Beth? With another guy. We heard all about it from Crossland. You just stood here and let him go? I'm through giving him advice. He wants to blow somebody's head off. That's his lookout. Who are you worrying about, anyway? About Matt or the guy he's going to kill? Nobody said him kill except Matt. Knowing him, I wouldn't make book on that. Do we go for Matt together or do I go for him alone? Why should we leave here? Well, for one reason, because I've got a pretty good idea that the FBI is following me. I shook them off last night, but sooner or later... Will, Matt's going to look for Crosland first. Okay, so we'll phone Crosland on our way out of here. There's a store in the village. And get your things, then get in the car. How do I know? Go in the store and find out. Yeah, I think maybe I will. Hello? Operator, are you sure Mr. Crosland doesn't answer? Very well. Or will you call another number, please? Lewiston, 7782. I want to speak with Dr. Halleck. Dr. Ben Halleck. Yes, yes, I will. Hang up, honey. I said hang up. <laughs> Maybe that was on the up and up, maybe it wasn't. After this, I'll do the call and get back in the car. Well, that's 
you once again, Crosland. I want to know what you saw. Why don't you let me answer the phone just now? What right have you got I to... I met make... Jackson. I said I want to know what you saw. Then pay off, buddy. Pay off. I made a deal with Merrill, but I wasn't figuring on the FBI, so either you pay off or I don't talk. You'll talk. Now, who is he? The guy who took her out of town and stashed away can count up to a grand, maybe even more. Who is he? Cut it out, Jackson. You roughed me up and I'll... Who is he? What's his name? Where do I find him? Take it easy. His name's Halleck. Dr. Halleck. He'll tell you all about him at the hospital. Anybody watching that hospital? No, no more. They're out beating the bushes for her. I don't know any more on it. Playing both ends against the middle, huh? That's for amateurs, Crosland. Maybe now you'll remember. Give me the FBI. Indianapolis, 5505. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll hold on. No. No, Matt. No! Where are we going? To the hospital. Halleck's hospital. That's where Beth told us to go long ago. I had to find out if Matt had seen Crosland. But wasn't he there? Wasn't Crosland in his hotel? Lobby was full of cops. Crosland was bumped off in his room 20 minutes ago. Can I help you, sir? Dr. Halleck. Is he around? He's in surgery. Is there anything I can do? Surgery? No, no, I just wanted to pay him for what he did for a friend of mine. Well, it's after hours. The accounting department won't be open for morning. Would you care to leave your name? No, no, never mind. Miss Austin. Oh, what's the matter? You look as if... Dr. Mr. Halleck, Maggie, where is he? Why, he's up in surgery. Is there anything Maggie, else? has there been anyone here looking for him? A man... Anyone in the last half hour? Why, yes, just a few minutes ago, but he went out. Are you sure he went out? Well, I don't know for sure. I had to leave the desk to answer the door. Don't call the FBI, Maggie. Tell them to get over here right away. There's a man and a woman outside waiting for me. If they come in, tell them I'm looking for Matt. I thought you'd show up, baby. Wherever Halleck is, that's where I figured I'd find you. Matt, please. Will and Ann, they're waiting for us. <laughs> Look at him down there. Those doctors, they're operating, see? Almost finished. <laughs> you get a first-class view from up here, huh? Amphitheater, it said on the door. Surgery amphitheater. <laughs> Just like the bleachers at a ball game. Look at them. Matt, you're all wrong. I went to the cottage first. Will a man will tell you that. I only came here to find you. Don't well, give me that. I know all about you and Halleck. Then if you do, you must know there's nothing between us. Come on, Matt, please. After I've finished what I've come here to do. Come across the hall, look out the window. You'll believe me when you see Will's car. Dark outside. How would I know for sure who's... Go- you tipped him off. You told him I was here. Please, we've got to get out of here. You've got the whole country looking for you. You're not worried about me, honey. You're worried about what's going to happen to him down there. I came back to you. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I'll never leave you again. I don't believe you. I came to do a job, and I'm going to do it now. All right, hold it down there. One of you doctors is Halleck. Which one? Take those masks off your faces. What kind of a joke is this? A joke, huh? This gun's got six bullets, enough for all of you. Let's see your faces or I start in. I'm Halleck. No, no, no! Get down on the floor, Miss Austin. There's no way out, Jackson. We got men at every exit. Drop the gun. No way out, huh? Tell that to Halleck! Franklin. Yes, Doctor? We're through in there now. Miss Austin's conscious. She'll be all right. I guess you know about Jackson. Yeah, the nurse just told me. He had to die this way, I suppose, sooner or later. Well, I'm glad she's going to recover. You know, it's amazing how readily you fellows can mend a wound. I wish X-raying a woman's mind was just as simple. So do I. I wouldn't have let her risk her life for me. That bullet was meant for me. But if she hadn't risked her life, we'd have no basis for a recommendation of leniency. Thanks, Franklin. May I see you alone? For a couple of minutes? Sure, go ahead. Beth. I I can answer all your questions now. You already have. 
I know now why you came back. Why you didn't stop to think about the risk. Count the cost. Oh, but I, I did count it then. I want to pay. Beth, remember the day we took the detour? <laughs> it, it led us home. And it always will. Tomorrow, a year from tomorrow, whenever you get there, we'll be waiting for you. In a moment, our stars will return. This is really a story about two people. One is Chief Petty Officer Harry Frame, a veteran Navy electrician who saw lots of action in the war in the Pacific. The other is Mrs. Sadaya Ishiwata of Tokyo. Mrs. Ishiwata turned her home and her fortune over to 53 boys and girls of all ages who were orphaned by World War II. And Chief Frame devoted his off-duty hours to helping this tiny Japanese lady. He organized his friends into work teams, and because of their work, the home took on a bright new look. New panes of glass were installed, a new girls' dormitory was built, and twice a week, a Navy truck rolled up with leftover food, writing paper, worn-out clothing, and other contributions from the men. Chief Frame made it his private project toward better relationships between people of two different countries, and it's paid off in mutual goodwill. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, Dennis Morgan and Virginia Mill. Please step forward for a curtain call. <laughs> Don't you think it's about time we heard about next week's show? And time is very important in next Monday's play. Because it's the tense, thrilling story of a man who kept the city of New York in suspense for 14 hours. And as the stars of this gripping drama from the studios of 20th Century Fox, and in his original role will be that dynamic actor, Paul Douglas, co-starring with Academy Award nominee, Terry Moore. Well, that will make exciting listening. Good night, Irving. Good night. Good night. Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.